Now, our next speaker is a man who balances multiple hats. He's a business executive who led HCL Tech from 2007 to 2013. He's an author whose best-selling book, Employees First, Customers Second, Turning Conventional Management Upside Down, has received praise from many management authors. He's also a philanthropist in his role as the founder chairman of Sampark Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Vineet Nair. Good evening. I'd like to start with the story of an ant. There were two ants sitting and they were talking about their vision of life. And the first ant said that my vision of life is to be a very rich ant. I want to be actually the richest ant in the world and I want to try very hard to be that ant. The second ant said, actually, I don't want to be rich. I want to be very fast. I want to be the fastest ant in the world. And therefore, I'm going to work very hard to be a very fast ant. And in walked the third ant, listening to this conversation, and they said, hey, do you have a vision for yourself? And the ant turned to them and said, yes, my vision is not to be an ant anymore. I don't want to be a fat ant. I don't want to be a rich ant. I don't want to be a fast ant. I want to be a butterfly. The day the ant thinks about not being an ant, but being a butterfly is the day an entrepreneur is born. Most organizations are full of ants. They are running from one place to another, not knowing what to do. But entrepreneurs are not ants. They are butterflies. But it is the unfortunate truth that some butterflies fly and some butterflies never take off. So what makes some butterflies successful? What makes some ants really fly and become these beautiful butterflies? I don't know the answer, but I can tell you from my own experience. I started Comnet in 1993. It took us, 100, it, it took us 10 years to become $100 million, the next five to become $1 billion, and the next three to become $2 billion. We started Sampark Foundation. It took us seven years to get to a million children, and the next three to get to seven million children, and the next two, I'm sure, will get to 20 million children. So whenever you look at success as an entrepreneur, what comes to my mind are three recipes for success you should think about. First is take chances. You must understand that we hear a lot about problems in life. In 1993, the money was not there. We were borrowing at 36% interest rate. License issues were there. National Stock Exchange was setting up. We bid for National Stock Exchange. They wanted to buy from a company which had experience. We had no experience. And yet we won the contract to set up the world's first, uh, or the India's first uh, exchange, floorless exchange. And the trick to that is to take chances. In life, it is all about taking chances and getting excited about imperfections. When a diamond cutter looks at polished diamond, he should feel bored. When he looks at rough diamond, he should feel excited. When a potter looks at rough clay, the potter should feel excited. So if you are an entrepreneur and you have decided not to be an ant anymore, then whenever there is a problem in life, you should feel excited because you are the only one who can pass over the bridge. Nobody else can. So therefore, if there is a license problem or there is a funding problem or there is whatever problem there may be, you need to look at the mirror and say, I will take that chance because I'm the only guy who can take the chance because I'm not an ant. The second is think impossible. You must, you know, I, I take a lot of leverage of this story which has always inspired me of this one-armed boy who wanted to learn judo. And he went from one coach to another coach to third coach and said, coach, can you teach me judo? And everybody says, no, one-armed boys don't play judo. Till one coach said, yes, I will teach you judo. And not only I will teach you judo, judo I will make you participate in a competition and help you win the competition. A one year of training later, this boy participated in a junior competition. He won the first round, the second round, the semifinals, finals, and he had the trophy in his left hand 
sometime later. Everybody rushed to the coach and asked, what happened? We rejected this kid, you accepted the kid, and the kid won. How did that happen? And he said, you were looking at the wrong thing. You were seeing what he had or what he didn't have. I was looking at the opportunity of what I can do with what he had. He had only one arm and there is an attacking move. The only counter to that move is to catch hold of the right arm of this boy and turn him around. And since he didn't have a right arm, there was no counter to that move. So every time he will attack, he will score. So the question here is that when you look at life with the lens of what can you do, not what you can't do, you will win. If you are not attempting the impossible, how would impossible happen? The reason you became an entrepreneur was to do the impossible. The reason you became an entrepreneur is you did not want to be an ant anymore. So why cry about things which only you can fix? Why not dream big? Why not dream impossible? Why not get excited by opportunities of attempting the impossible? Even if you die attempting the impossible, the world will notice only those people who are at least attempting the impossible, if not achieving the impossible. And if you don't attempt the impossible, impossible will not happen. No government is going to hold your hands. Nobody is interested in you. They are interested in their own thing. They have too many problems. But you are not an ant. You are a butterfly and you can fly. So take chances and believe in the magic of impossible. And the last and the most important, you can't do it alone. You must understand in the industrial revolution, when manufacturing industry was born, it was all about processes. Processes were put together and the manager was born. The role of a manager was to try and put people together and get 10 out of 1. That means get more output for every unit of input. But in the digital age, managers don't work because nobody wants to be managed. Your employees don't want to be managed. Your sons and daughters don't want to be managed. Even your wives and husbands don't want to be managed. The word managing is a bad word. Inspire. Inspire your teams to do the impossible. Inspire your teams to climb Mount Everest every day. If you don't inspire your teams, how will you achieve the impossible? So if you truly want to be a butterfly, your team has to be a butterfly, your company has to be a butterfly, and how will they be a butterfly unless you inspire them to be? And that is the question you need to ask. In India, that is the problem. We discuss the problems. We don't discuss opportunities. We don't discuss people attempting the impossible. We discuss the ants. We don't discuss the butterflies. We don't discuss the ants wanting to be butterflies. There is no fun in being a rich ant, a fat ant, and a fast ant. There is a lot of fun in being a butterfly, a failed butterfly, or a successful butterfly, but butterfly it is. Congratulations, my butterflies. Fly away. Thank you.